given that this, this integral Dharma training is much more practically focused, okay? So uh, we're not going to be, again, like I mentioned, we're not going to be unpacking integral theory, and we're not going to be spending a lot of time in the conceptual realm, even though compared to some of our other meditation trainings, we will spend more time with conceptual frameworks so that way we can frame enough the practice that we're going to do. But the practice itself will be sufficient to experientially explore uh, what it means to, to have an integral dharma practice. But <clears throat> I do want to make a note again to reference my introduction to integral theory, okay? So if you want that, that is, was my attempt to give the most condensed form, enough to just get you through the door and then get to practicing. But Ken has plenty of resources and giant books if you want to dive into that and uh, go to town. So when I was thinking about this, first we have to ask ourselves a, a few questions about what we mean about practice. Why will we even do this training? Now, you all are here for a reason and you've already had some clarity of why you need more than say, for example, a waking up practice. So again, most people in the Boost Geeks community are anchored in waking up. And I'm not gonna define that because I assume this is an assumed thing in the, in the Buddhist Geeks community, but classical awakening that we might find in a tradition like Buddhism, okay? Um, so how does that unfold? That's the interesting question. How does that unfold for us that one day we say, you know what, I might need a little bit more. Something's missing. That's usually the first indicator. And I want to share one quote from one of my favorite books, um, Dong Shan's Five Ranks, and it's a commentary by Ross. And I don't know if I had to pronounce his last name, Belletter, but it is one of my favorite books. It's so fantastic. It's a book that kind of covers the bigger journey of awakening, the bigger arc of, journey, uh, of, of awakening that unfolds over one's life. And there's a, a great quote that captures this feeling that will spur potentially uh, the need and the search for an integral Dharma practice. And that is, even after a deep realization, we feel that it is not enough. Actually, that is a measure of its depth. The deeper the realization, the deeper the sense that it is not enough. So first, for me, in order for this to not be conceptual, like, oh, there's a cool map and there's all these cool things that I could practice, for me, it really has to arise organically from within our lived experience. And that's something that's gnawing at us. It says it's not enough. This realization, whatever realizations we might have had, it's not enough. So we start searching. And um, in particular, one big distinction, just like, you know, again, if we're really focused on the realm of waking up, which is usually concerned, we can say this in different ways, depending on our flavor of traditions and lineages, but uh, we're concerned with the nature of of things, the nature of awareness itself, not thoughts, uh, the nature of reality, the nature of experience, but not the content of experience. But here in integral, an integral Dharma practice, we very much immediately go into all the content of, of experience and say that that content of experience matters, how it's put together, the, the specificity of the content of our experience matters. Now, in all of that, we start making distinctions to help us make a little sense out of it, to orient. And that's why we use a map like integral theory. So when we distinguish between waking up, cleaning up, growing up and showing up, that's helpful, provides a little clarity to say like, okay, out of all the content of my, my experience, where might my time best be served? Where, where is it needed the most? And uh, so we don't have to get caught up in the maps, but the maps are, can be very illuminating and so integral dharma and integral theory is one of those maps that for me, regardless of the specificities of it, provides some clarity, provides me some orientation to, to where I might want to practice. So to recap this uh, it, and say it in many different ways, we don't want to start with an idea of an integral practice, which is, I think, less of a less of a thing I feel like I need to emphasize inside of these trainings, but you know, in general, the integral community, since it's about philosophy and it's about the maps, it can remain at the level of an idea versus the lived experience. So we want it to rise out of our lived experience. Okay. Now, I really am a big fan of questions and the practice of inquiry to get at this a little further. And so first of all, we can ask what is practice in period. Now that might be that gnawing, like at first, well, practice is about waking up and nothing more than that. But then our idea of what is practice changes, okay? So we say, well, practice might take a lot of different forms and a lot of different flavors. So even opening up to that, that question 
can start exposing whatever our assumptions are about practice and what we might be paying attention to and what we might be ignoring. Next question, why am I, why are we practicing? Because really for me, there's the experience first and the practice follows. Now I know that like, I've heard about practices in my life and I just said, that sounds neat. That sounds fun. I wanna do that and find out what happens. That's totally valid to just hear about that and follow it. But really, again, if it's for our lived experience, at a certain point, I, I, my observation for myself and other people I know, that at a certain point, what drives practice is that lived experience. And so from that, it says, that's the why. Why am I practicing? Why do I feel like I need to do this practice? And to sit with that question over and over and let it um, animate the practice and the practice choices. Uh, another way of saying that, what are we practicing for? So to just really make that a practice to answer that question. Now, sometimes it gets really clear and you know, in terms of uh, the phases of insight, which we like to reference, once that's clear, then we enter into an efforting phase usually. It's like, okay, I'm clear what I'm practicing for and I'm clear about the practice, so now I'm gonna effort. But it's helpful at a certain point in time to really ask that question again, ask it anew and say, what am I practicing for? And then therefore, what do I need? out of this whole realm of what we could call integral Dharma practice. Um, and last question, which I've really talked about, it's, it's what am I aware of? What are we aware of? And what are we not aware of? Which is influencing, animating or limiting our practice or what we would consider practicing or exploring in our experience, both individually and collectively. Now, going back to the waking up side of things and, and how we relate to practice. Classically, you know, Buddhism, for example, maps things out really refined in a refined manner and with details and says, here's the path, follow each of these steps and you will arrive at the end, at the end goal. And it's really nice and it's tight, it's predictable in a certain way. And for a waking up kind of practice, it, it often can function. But when we go into an integral Dharma practice, there is no uh, predetermined map for how practice will unfold. It's way, our, our experience is way too complex and nuanced and life is, we know from the waking up perspective that that impermanence is a quality of, of life. But in our lived experience, it's not just changing, it's evolving and there are patterns to our existence, okay? so. Because of that, and because it never ends, we always have to be asking these questions. Why am I practicing? What should we be practicing? What's happening? Because what's happening out there can change all of a sudden, which then is gonna get reflected in our, in our individual uh, practice experience or in our group practice experience, okay? So I wanna emphasize that. And in particular in this training, we're gonna explore a set number of practices. We're gonna uh, have a taste of different domains of practice. Um, from the integral perspective, but you'll need to take this and really personalize it, uh, not just individually, but the, the, the we's that you're a part of, this we here, your families, your communities, relationships, your, the world, planet, okay? So constantly, this is an opportunity to simulate in a certain sense, our practice, so that way we can really apply it in a much more specific way through asking those questions. So last thing I would say with this is find your practice edge um, with a certain sense of determination and with compassion and with a reality check. So de the determination is that a sense of countering complacency uh, or auto being on autopilot. So it's like, let's pay attention you know, to our experience and let's find out what is really needed. But then to do it with compassion and a reality check because we are, we're all limited. We all only have so much energy, so much time. We have different configurations, you know, um, at usually around five o'clock or six o'clock each day, I'm helping my stepdaughter with her Spanish homework. That's part of my reality. So, so that's part of my practice. Okay. So we have to apply this to, to, to our lives in that way. And just know that like, I can't do everything. I can't, I can't, I can't practice everything that I 
really could use and need to practice. And same thing for we, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to find that edge and try to be with it. Um, and I say that too, because sometimes with the integral theory, once if, if it's exciting, we can get this idea of like, Ooh, we can get two things. One, the, 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 the idea of becoming a superhuman, like, Oh, look at all these practices. I just need to line them up and I'm going to become amazing. Super Bodhisattva, which would be great if it were possible, but you know, <laughs> uh, but the other thing is we could get really overwhelmed of saying like, Oh my God, like how much suffering there is in the world, how much potential it is in the world. And like, how can I do it all? And then we collapse in our presence. Now, part of this, that what gives me comfort is that like, if we move beyond a simply individually based practice orientation, I and we can rely on each other together. We can all be practicing and we can all be contributing and through our collective efforts as individuals and, and we's then, Hey, we can make we can make a difference. We can realize change. We can experience healing. We can experience transformation. We can collectively wake up. Okay, so then I can relax a little bit and say, okay, hey, we got this group here. I don't have to do it all myself. So that's what I have to say. And going back to the question, what is most important to you and us right now, and what do we need to practice? Okay. <laughs>